so many people leave college with the goal to be somebody. And being somebody usually means getting a really good job, making good money, buying a really nice house, driving a really nice car, attaining some important position, and, and helping your kids to do the same. Uh, for the Christian, you know, being somebody usually means all of that, and faithfully going to church on Sundays, and maybe Bible study during the week. But I believe that Jesus Christ is calling for people to be willing to be a nobody for him. A lot of times you hear the word hospitality. Here's what you're thinking. You're thinking about inviting your friends over, people you already know, that already know you, that you like very much, and they already like you, and sharing things that you wouldn't second, take a second thought to think about to get into them. That is not what I'm talking about. That is entertainment. That is entertaining somebody. I'm talking about this biblically rich depiction of hospitality you see throughout the Bible. And we don't have to have all the answers. We, we don't have to be perfect. But in the own unique way of the synagogues of our lives, we have to be just simply faithful. Just simply faithful. And, and until the world is reached, which is what's going to happen, we need to be willing to put our faith in the place of challenge. We can't spend our lives in holy huddles. The disciples are shocked that he's showing hospitality to an outcast. Why? Why are they so shocked? Because for them, hospitality is what you do with friends. Jesus is saying hospitality would do enemies. It's what you do with, with those that are not necessarily on your side. When I'm going to send you out, when I'm going to have you go out into this world and be a host to every nation, every people, every person that you're around, and you share the water, the bread, and the hospitality that I gave you. You know, we kind of have the idea that there are like two types of Christianity. Uh, normal Christianity, where you basically hold to a, a set of orthodox beliefs and can perform a set of minimal religious duties. And then you have like radical Christianity. And that's where you actually have to really pay attention to what Jesus taught and how Jesus lived and even detail attention and obedience to the teaching of scripture. And radical Christianity includes things like fasting, Sacrificial giving, inner city living, overseas going, and gospel sharing, self denying, cross bearing. But there's only one thing, one gospel, and one version of Christianity. The normal Christian life is a radical Christian life. And the radical Christian life is a normal Christian life for all Christians, every single one of us. Are you bold? Are you bold? I think most of you here are afraid of being too bold. As if that's our problem! <laughs> I know the media tell us that. The perception of Christians in the media is that we're a bunch of Bible thumpers. They're always going on about Jesus and trying to fit it into any conversation. Jesus said things that even broke up funerals. Right? And so did the apostles. He caused a stir. You just want to get along and be a nice person. People don't just need nice people. They need people who offer them the words of eternal life. And God will demonstrate that he's taking back his world in miraculous and powerful ways in our lives. But I also don't want us to miss that the normative work of the Spirit looks like this. Love. Joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. God loves and accepts you as much as He loves and accepts His Son, Jesus. Not only is he not disappointed in you, he sees your life as joyfully, as proudly, as if all of the good and obedience and love that Jesus Christ showed while living on this earth were done by you. We've got to break out of our timidity, not out of shame, not out of guilt. Please don't walk out of here and say, hey, just blow the guilt does. No! That's not what's happening. 
And we have an amazing privilege. Someone told you about Jesus. Somebody did. A parent, a Sunday school teacher, a coach, a public school teacher, a friend. Somebody did. And you're a new creature in Christ now because we have the amazing privilege of knowing who Jesus is and not just getting so consumed with our own paneled houses that we preach Christ with boldness, not fearing the sneer or fearing an eye roll, which is about as bad as it gets in this culture, at least for now. Why are we finally going to come out of our timidity? You know what?